the Word of Faith Netcast is on the air. Well, praise God, this is Dr. Bill Bailey, and this is the Word of Faith Netcast. I'm glad you could join us once again. As we get into the Word of God, and I tell you what, we got some good things. We started in our last netcast talking about faith. What is faith? Who has faith? How can you use faith? Just some good, practical, beneficial things that we want to talk about. Uh, before we get into that, though, let me remind you once again about Word of Faith Radio, WOFR.org. If you haven't already told your friends, just go ahead and send them an email. Let them know that Word of Faith Radio is out there and it is available for them to hear every single day, Monday through Friday, Saturday and Sunday, all week long and then all month and all throughout the year. It's just there available all the time for you. And I'd encourage you to listen to Word of Faith Radio because there's a lot of folks on there teaching the uncompromising Word of Faith and that's what we're all about here at Word of Faith Ministries, proclaiming the Word of Faith, being a showcase of ministries just like the ministries that are on Word of Faith Radio, and then training people to fulfill the Word of God. So I encourage you to go to WOFR.org. I'm going to put that right on the screen here so you can see that. You can get in to Word of Faith Radio so many different ways. You can listen to it on your computer. You uh, can use your smartphone. If you have a smartphone and connect that way. We even have an Android app available on the website wfr.org in the upper right hand corner you can click on that and find out how to download the uh, android phone or tablet app that will allow you to listen to word of faith radio pretty much wherever you have a wi-fi connection so all kinds of good ways that you can hear the word of god and as we found out last week romans 10 17 so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. A continual process. You know, last week we talked about the fact that faith is in the present tense, but it's an ongoing present tense. It's not only now, it'll be now the next time it's now. You remember we talked about that? How there's a, um, there's a now that's present tense, but whoop, now it's in the past. <laughs> and then, oh, now it's now, but oh, now that's in the past. See what I'm saying? It's a constantly moving target of now. So the now is a continual now, a continuous now, and that's what faith is, is always in the present tense because it draws from the spiritual realm into the natural realm the things that you are believing for that you set your expectation on. Well, we won't go into everything we went into last time. Go back to that netcast and listen to that all the way through, and uh, you'll get caught up. For right now, let's, let's keep going. We want to talk about a couple of things that I've been meditating on recently because I've been getting some emails. You know, I get interesting emails, praise the Lord. At the end of the, the program, I always say, go ahead and send me an email with your questions. I get some interesting questions. You say, well, what do you mean, Dr. Bill? Well... <laughs> Some of them are just different. They're the kind of thing, and I don't mean they're wrong or bad or anything like that. You know, don't get me wrong. Uh, what I mean is they're things I've never really thought about quite the way the people ask the question. I even had one guy recently sent me a question that said, Now, I know that this may sound strange to you coming from your uh, belief system. And I'm like, okay, where is he headed with this? And then he asked a question, and I thought, why even ask that question? That's so completely simple and understood. I don't even know why you'd ask the question. But it helped me actually as a teacher to understand there are people out there at all kinds of different places, all kinds of different positions. They've heard all kinds of things taught throughout their life. And they've come up in churches that don't teach the uncompromising Word of God. That all of these concepts that we talk about and take for granted, to be honest, uh, they're still struggling with. And the question that he asked me was really interesting. He, he simply said, how can you actually expect to do the things that Jesus did? 
Now he's talking about laying hands on the sick and seeing them recover. He's talking about raising the dead. He's talking about some of the things that we see, obviously, in Jesus' ministry, multiplying the bread and the, and the fish and so forth. He's like, how can you possibly expect to do those kinds of things? How can you expect the miraculous to actually take place in your life and in your ministry? And, of course, you know, from a Word of Faith perspective, it's like, well, of course we know that, you know, we're going to do the same things Jesus did and greater things, and we just kind of, you know go on from there and don't even think about the fact there are people still struggling with that question. And so I heard Keith Moore say something recently. Now, I don't know about you, but I really enjoy hearing Pastor Keith Moore teach the Word of God. He just brings it down to a nice, simple, uh, graspable, if that's a word, uh, understanding of things as he teaches the Word of God. And I highly recommend Keith Moore's ministry. Uh, his ministry is More Life Ministries. Uh, you can find him on the on the web. Uh, you can also find him at Faith Life Church, the church that he pastors in Branson, Missouri. He's got a TV program and radio program, all kinds of things where you can hear Brother Moore. And I encourage you to do that. But I was listening to his TV program, and he said something that got me to thinking about some of these questions that I've been getting. And this is the statement that he made that really got me off in this direction on this teaching. He made the statement... Jesus answers the questions that people are asking. And I went, yeah, that's what we need to see. You know, if somebody writes me an email or a message or a letter and says, I don't believe it that way, I don't care if you believe it that way, that's not the way I believe it. And, you know, they get combative. Well, I, I don't, I'm not interested in being combative. I'm not interested in arguing. As a teacher, I just teach the Word. That's it. And to me, the Word is not confusing. The Word is not uh, arbitrary. <laughs> you know, the Word simply says what it says, and I believe what it says, and I move on. But, you know, they're coming from all this religious background and stuff, and they've got all these questions. And so I realize that the way to answer these questions that people are asking is to ask Jesus the same question. Now you might say, well, now wait a minute, Dr. Bill. I mean, how's Jesus going to answer the question? He said the answer's in his word. Now let me give you an example. Here's, here's a question that I just talked about that somebody wrote me recently. And I'm looking over here at my computer where I've got it written up, some of what these questions were. Can we really do what Jesus did? Can we really heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils? You know, can we really do what Jesus did? Well, here's what we ought to do. We ought to go to Jesus. Remember, Jesus is the Word of God made flesh. So His Word, go to His Word. Go to Jesus and say, Jesus, can we really do what you did? All right, let's look at John chapter 14, verse 12. Verily, verily, which is truly, truly, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. Well, now let's just stop right there. Jesus, can I do the works you did? Jesus said, the works that I do shall you do also, if you believeth on me. If you're a believer, you can do the same thing I did. Now you see, from a word of faith perspective, we know, we understand that Jesus laid aside all of his power, all of his ability and prestige as the second person in the Godhead when he came to earth. He laid all that aside. He emptied himself, the Bible says, and he came to earth and operated here in his earthly ministry as a man anointed by the Holy Ghost. Did you get that? Remember, he didn't perform any miracles until after he received the infilling of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit descended upon him as a dove and he was anointed, and God said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. At that point, he was anointed by the Holy Ghost, and it says he went into the desert led by the Spirit, and empowered by the Spirit. Then he came back, and he started doing all the miracles and signs and wonders that we're familiar with in his earthly ministry. Before that, though, he didn't do any. He was a man in his earthly ministry anointed by the Holy Ghost. Now, he was the second person of Godhead? Yes. He was. 
He still is and he always will be the second person of the Godhead. But remember what the Bible says. He emptied himself of his power, rights, and authority when he came to the earth and he operated as a man. So in his earthly ministry, Jesus, can we do the things you did? The things that I do shall ye do also. But it doesn't stop there. Jesus never stops with just enough. <laughs> he goes on. And greater works than these shall you do because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever you ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Now, a lot of people want to argue, well, the greater works is getting people born again. Jesus couldn't get people born again in his earthly ministry because he hadn't gone to the cross yet, so that's the greater works. Okay, fine. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. But that doesn't discount he said you'll do the same things that I'm doing here, which is healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out devils. Amen. He even sent the disciples. Now think about this. He sent the disciples out two by two, and he told them, wherever you go, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely you have received, freely give. What? These guys weren't even born again. They were his disciples, yes, but they weren't born again. At that point, they weren't even filled with the Holy Ghost. They were simply operating under Jesus' authority. And that's, that's enough, believe me, praise the Lord. But, think about that. So Jesus answers the question very clearly here. He says, can, the question is, can I do, me, Dr. Bill, can I do the things Jesus did in his earthly ministry? These things shall you do, Dr. Bill, but even greater things because I go to my Father and whatever you ask in my name, that's what I'll do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Then he didn't stop there. He went on to say in verse 14, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. But then he set, followed it up in verse 15. Don't want to forget this. If you love me, keep my commandments. <laughs> Amen. You know, this is not carte blanche. Go out and sin and do whatever you want and believe for things that aren't scriptural. No. Keep the commandments, but whatever you ask according to his will, according to his word, in his name, Jesus said, I will do it. Can I do the things that Jesus did? Yes. Have I ever laid hands on the sick and had them recover? Yes. I've prayed for folks. I prayed for a lady one time uh, over the phone, just a phone conversation. And at the time, I'll tell you the truth, I'll tell off on myself here a bit. I was not feeling spiritual at all. You know, one of those times where you're just not feeling <laughs> particularly spiritual. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I was eating supper, and I'm concentrating on eating my supper. I had me a nice steak that had been you know, uh, broiled, and, and I, man, that looked good, and it was hot, and it was right out of the oven, and I was enjoying myself, and the phone rings. And my wife said, it's for you, and I went, oh, man, why can't people just leave you alone at supper time, let you eat? You know what I'm saying? That kind of attitude. And I go to the phone, and there's this lady on the phone, and she says, oh, Brother Bill, just before I had my doctorate, <laughs> oh, Brother Bill, I saw you teach in Lexington, North Carolina. Well, praise the Lord. And I heard you preach the word. All right, well, amen. And if you'll pray for me right now over the phone, I'll be healed. Well, I thought, bless your heart, lady. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay. So I'm on the phone. I said, Lord, we pray right now for this dear sister. And we believe that she's healed from the top of her head, the soles of her feet. And I quoted a few scriptures, blah, 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 and so forth. And said, bless you, and hung up. And went back to my stake. <laughs> oh, Dr. Bill, you didn't do that. Oh, yes, I did. <laughs> I did. To be honest, I couldn't have cared less. You know what I'm saying? But now, a few months later, I went back to Lexington, North Carolina, and I held a Spirit of Faith seminar at the time. That's what we called them at the time. And it was at the Holiday Inn. And I went in and I had my meeting, and this lady walked up, just a bright, smiling lady, you know, and she's shaking my head. Praise God, Brother Bill. I'm the lady that called and prayed with you over the phone. And I thought, oh, and I actually kind of felt just a little embarrassed. You know what I mean? <laughs> kind of went, oh yeah, I remember that. Uh, 
okay, uh, praise the Lord. <laughs> and she said, I want you to know I'm completely healed. I said, well, praise God, that's great. Now, here's what got me. She said, I was blind. I couldn't see at all. <laughs> and you prayed with me over the phone, and now I could see. And she was walking and reading and talking to people and, you know, the whole nine yards. And I'm like, <laughs> now, I'd love to be able to say, you know, that I had laid hands on this lady and had great faith and, and she got healed and was completely blind. Now she could see and, oh, it wasn't amazing. You know what? I was about as spiritual as an old wet dish rag. But, you know, here's the thing. It wasn't up to me to heal her. It was up to her faith and agreement with a believer, which is what I was, and I was fully in agreement for her to be healed. But you know what? God's the one's the healer. He did the, the work, praise God, and she was healed of her blindness. And there were some people there from her family, other folks with her, and they testified, yes, she was blind. Yes, now she can see. And I was like, wow. So can you do the same things Jesus did in his earthly ministry? Absolutely. Absolutely you can. Jesus said himself, the things that I did, you'll do. See, he answered the question. I don't have to answer the question. Jesus answered the question. All right, let's look at another one. I had a guy write me a message one time, an email, and he says, can we dare speak out of our own mouth the things that God said? Isn't that just too holy? Shouldn't we not say what God said? Because after all, you know, we're trying to be humble. And so he's actually asking me, should I feel free to say what God said? Well, okay, I tell you what let's do. This time, let's ask Abraham. Abraham, you weren't even born again. You're just a guy there who has a covenant with God out there in the wilderness. And uh, God's encouraging you to believe for a child. And he even changes your name so that you'll call yourself father of many nations. Abraham. His name before was Abram. Abraham, let me ask you a question. Should we speak what God speaks? Well, Romans 4, 17 says, As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. That's what he renamed him, to father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, Abraham believed, even God, he believed God, who quickeneth the dead, he makes alive the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Now, that's good old King James, but you take that out of the King James, you know what it's saying? calling things that do not exist yet like they did. That's what Abraham did. And it says Abraham did it because that's what he saw God doing. So Abraham, should we speak what God speaks? Yes, that's what he did. And it worked for him, didn't it? Who against hope or expectation, natural expectation, believed in the expectation that God had given him, that he might become the father of many nations, that was the whole point and purpose, according to that which is spoken, so shall thy seed be, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith. Abraham, how were you strong in faith? He said what God said. He spoke, I'm the father of many nations, even though he was not yet the father of many nations. Now a lot of people get all bent out of shape about that. Should we really say what God said? Should we speak just because we believe it? Well, apparently so, because that's what Abraham did. And we're just doing what we see Abraham do. Amen? Are you seeing this? Are you seeing the direction we're headed with this? The Word of God tells us that we, having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, therefore have I spoken. Therefore have I spoken. In other words, I believe, therefore I'm going to speak. Should I speak what God says? Well, if I believe, I've got to speak. If I believe, I've got to say it. I've got to do what God did. God spoke the universe into existence. I've got to do what Abraham did, like God, imitating God. That's exactly what he did. As a matter of fact, the Greek says, my mites is the, is the Greek word meaning an imitator of God. He imitated God. 
who called those things that be not yet as though they already were. He was not yet a father of many nations, but he called himself the father of many nations. We have to speak what we believe. I believed, therefore have I spoken. We also believe. Hey, I'm a we that also believes. Are you a we that also believes? I believe, therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore we speak. Should I speak God's word? Absolutely. I should speak God's word. Matter of fact, that's the reason Christians are failing, is because they're not speaking God's word. They're refusing to say what God said. They're refusing to do what God said to do. I mean, outright refusing, outright rebellion. Now, that's just wrong, folks. But we got to do what God said we're supposed to be doing. And if we don't, it's rebellion. Now, I realize some people aren't doing it because they have a complete misunderstanding of what they're supposed to do according to the Word of God. Okay, that's where a teacher comes in to teach you. <laughs> okay? But once you know, you ought to be doing what you know you're supposed to be doing. All right. Let's pick up on another one here. Has God changed his method of operation? In other words, I've had people tell me, well, you know, Dr. Bill, it's all well and good that you, uh, you believe these things. You know, that's all fine. Uh, but after all, God is not doing the same things today that he used to do. He's just changed his method of operation. He's not the same as he was. And yeah, he used to have people lay hands on the sick and they used to recover. That's all fine, but that's not the way it works today. And, and their, their proof of that is they look around and say, see, it's not working today. Well, I can show you lots of places it's working. I can have you talk to lots of people, including me and my wife, that it, where it worked. And folks at our church and folks they know where it's working all the time because they put it to work. But, okay, besides that, let's find out what the Bible has to say. Jesus, are you the same? Do you, are you doing things the same today that you used to do? Well, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, let's look at that. He's going to answer the question. Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. How long is forever? That's a pretty long time, isn't it? <laughs> Forever is forever. <laughs> Amen? So Jesus Christ is the same. He operates the same way. He is the healer. He's always been the healer. He's still in the healing business. He is the Savior. He's always been the Savior. He's still in the saving business. He is the one who makes you rich. He's always been the one who makes you rich. You go ask, go ask Abraham. That was a long, long, long time ago. But Abraham, it says, was the richest man in the East. He was the richest man they saw ever saw. David had so much gold, it was stacked up like it was just cordwood. I mean, Solomon, when he built the temple, he had to finally tell him, don't bring me any more gold. I got enough. <laughs> wow. See, God has always been a God of prosperity. He has always been a God of healing. He is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth thee. He's always done healing. He's always done prospering. He's always done saving. He saved Noah and his family out from the destruction that occurred during that day. He saved Lot and his family out of the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. He's always been a deliverer. Amen. And he'll always be one. He is today, and he will always be one. So, is he still doing these things? Absolutely he's still doing these things. See, there shouldn't be any confusion. There shouldn't be any, I don't know, confusion I guess is the best word I can come up with, over these things. People are just teaching stuff because A, they don't know any better, or B, some folks literally are trying to deceive other people for purposes of their own, I don't even know why. I mean, why Why are you trying to make sure people don't get healed? Why are you trying to make sure people don't get filled with the Holy Ghost and speak in other tongues as the Spirit gives them utterance? Why do you even care? Leave me alone, let me talk in the Holy Ghost, hallelujah. 
Amen. You don't like being healed, don't get healed, but let me be healed. <laughs> me and my family at least. Hallelujah in our church. <laughs> Why are you going to fuss at us? <laughs> no, I tell you what, we want you healed. We want you blessed. We want you saved, delivered, healed, protected, made whole, spirit, soul, body, financially and socially because that's what God has provided through the Lord Jesus Christ. You see what I'm saying? We're running out of time. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, I tell you what, though, I done preached myself completely happy. Hallelujah. And you need to get into the Word of God and ask, ask the Lord these questions yourself and look to the Word of God. Don't look to man. Don't look to denomination. Don't look to some book of philosophy. Don't look to other religions or Eastern religions. There's a lot of Eastern religions will tell you you shouldn't prosper because when you're poor, you're more spiritual. That's not what the Bible teaches. That's not what God teaches. Why do you want to believe it? Just because it sounds good. Well, for, for me, it doesn't sound good. It doesn't sound religious and special and spiritual. No, it just sounds wrong. <laughs> it sounds unbiblical. Amen. So it's time to get a hold of the Word of God and just go with the Word. Amen. Just forget what the rest of the world's saying. Forget what the, the liberals and the commies and the socialists and, and the atheists and everybody else are saying and just believe the Bible. Just go with the Word, praise God. Amen. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. I better stop because I just get wound up and want to keep preaching, praise the Lord. And that's fine. I enjoy it. But I want you to write me here. You can write me at Word of Faith Ministries. Our address is Word of Faith Ministries, P.O. Box 5213-5213, High Point, North Carolina. I like that, High Point. Boy, we're on a high point, amen? <laughs> high Point, North Carolina, 27262. My email address, I encourage you to write me there. It's always much faster. You can write me at Dr. Bill, D-R-B-I-L-L, -L, at W-O-F-M dot O-R-G. I'll put it right here on the screen where you can see it, and I encourage you to write me at my email address. Send me questions like these or others or things maybe you've heard other people say because we can answer these questions according to the Word of God and it will be a blessing for you. We're going to continue with this and find out more about faith and the Word of God you know, along these lines. Also, I want to encourage you to go to our website, www.wofm.org. I've got it up here on the screen. Go to that website. We've got articles. We've got videos. We've got just all uh, audio messages, all kinds of things that will be a blessing to you and teaching along these lines of what you, what your rights and privileges are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Well, join us again next time. Remember until then to fulfill the Word of God. The Word of Faith Netcast is brought to you by Word of Faith Ministries and our partners around the world.